Hey everybody, CFA back with you. Today we're going to talk all about silver certificates. We have not breached this subject very often on the channel and it is way past time to do so. Okay, we are going to get into the value of silver certificates here shortly, meaning, hey, I have one, how much is it worth? We're going to talk a little bit about that. But first, first I want to talk about when they were created, why the government created them, what was their purpose, what was their intent, and then why were they discontinued? All right, so let's just jump right into it. Okay, now to understand what a silver certificate is, we need to go back to 1873. That's five years before they were first produced. Now it is also when the Coinage Act of 1873 was signed into law by the U.S. government and the U.S. was placed on the gold standard. Now prior to the Coinage Act, anyone, anyone out there could take silver bullion to the mint and have it made into silver dollars. You could literally just exchange silver for silver coins. All right, now after the bill passed, miners as well as residents realized the mint would no longer do this and that silver had been essentially demonetized. They could no longer just cash in their silver. Now this caused uproar among citizens, especially the lower class who had access to silver, but perhaps not gold. And this began what became known as silver agitation, in which silverites argued that silver was more flexible money supply and that it should be redeemable as currency just as gold was. Those same people also branded the Coinage Act of 1873 as the Crime of 73. So people felt that the nation's financial elite had brought forth this act to delegitimize silver. Now a result is the reduction in money in circulation and tightening money supplies. Now this would directly benefit bankers, banks, creditors, people that lend money. All right, now, finally, five years after the crime of 73, Congress passed the Bland-Allison Act. Now, this act did not bring back free reign for people and miners to just exchange silver bullion for silver coins, but it did require the United States Treasury to purchase two to four million dollars of silver bullion from mining companies each month. Now, this bullion would be minted into silver coins, and once again, silver was monetized. Now, silver is not worth its weight in gold, so to speak, and a $5 silver piece would have been quite heavy and awkward to carry around, especially in large quantities. So to make an easier medium of exchange, the U.S. government began printing silver certificates against the silver in the treasury. In other words, Every silver certificate was backed by that amount of physical silver stored by the government. The certificates were also payable to the bearer on demand. It actually reads that on the certificates, meaning back then you could actually take your silver certificate to the bank, to the treasury, and you could get that much silver in return. So if I had a $10 silver certificate, I could take it in and exchange it for $10 in silver coin. So this actually went on from 1878 through the 1960s, but then silver prices started to climb, and they climbed to a point where a silver dollar was worth more than a dollar. And many people were exchanging their silver certificates for silver dollars, then melting them down for the bullion value. Now this began to reduce the silver in circulation. Now, in March of 1964, the Treasury stopped redeeming silver certificates for silver dollars. And on June 24th, 1968, all redemption in silver ended. Now, large quantities of the Treasury's stored silver dollars from that time since have been sold off to the public for collector value. All right, so now that you have some history on why the silver certificate came into existence, what it was used for, and why it was discontinued, let's go ahead and take a look at the notes themselves. All right, from their inception in 1878 through 1923, they were a large size note, much larger than paper currency we use today. Now, they had denominations of $1, $2, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100, and even, yes, $1,000. Now, in 
There is a very large variety of designs that were involved, and in my opinion, some are very interesting and unique. All right. Now, due to that large size note, it is highly unlikely that you will find one of these in circulation. That would be pretty darn unusual, but pretty darn cool, so keep checking that change. All right, now, these notes are highly collectible, especially in nicer condition. And if you have one, similar sold items uh, at online auctions like eBay, you can look them up and see what it might be worth. Now remember, condition plus rarity equals value. Nicer specimens, less of them made, they're gonna be worth more. We'll give you a quick look of some that we found here, uh, recent online auctions and what they sold for right here. Okay, now silver certificates from 1928 through the final series of 1957 were a small size uh, paper currency currently like what we use today. Now they were produced in denominations of $1, $5, and $10, and they can be highly collectible as well. Once again, nicer examples are valued higher, and then if you get into star notes or fancy serial numbers, they can also bring a much higher premium. Now, if you're curious about what star notes and fancy serial numbers are to look for on those, uh, we have some videos on that that can help you out, and I'll put links to them down below. We have a playlist all on currency, and uh, sometimes those silver certificates can be worth a lot more based on the star or the fancy serial number. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you some uh, recent sold small size silver certificates that we found uh, at online auction right here. All right, so I hope that helps some of you out there that maybe inherited or just acquired some silver certificates. Maybe now you have a better idea of what they could be worth, why they even exist, uh, and why they were discontinued. Uh, we enjoy researching the history on coins and currency and sharing that with you and also helping you out to try and figure out what the value may be of some that you have. So if you have questions on any of this, please drop it in the comments below. If you have uh, some topics you'd like for us to discuss in the future, I'll do a little research, maybe make a video on it. Again, put it in the comments below and let us know. All right, thank you uh, for joining us today. Thank you for watching Coins for Amateurs. We appreciate your support. And as always, keep checking that change.